Hi everybody, thanks for coming out. Uh, awesome tonight, I kind of lied there about the two minutes, so uh, hopefully you can finish up your conversations after our speaker's done. Uh, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. We're gonna be talking about AdWords, which is a topic that I am really involved with, and really interested in, and I'm glad that we're able to address this topic um, at Awesome. Um, I know a lot of you run small businesses or new businesses, and for me, the most, the easiest access to customers, relevant customers looking for my services comes from search campaigns, and of course the biggest player is AdWords. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into AdWords or how to manage or, or campaigns or any of that stuff because that's what our speaker's gonna cover tonight, um, but I hope you guys find value out of this. Um, my name is David Rolopole. You can look me up on Twitter at DavidVMC. Uh, I do want to ask a quick question, though, and this kind of relates to our next slide. Um, you know, Food and Beer is sponsored by Affiliate Summit. So give those guys a round of applause, please. Sean is a perpetual sponsor of this meetup. I don't even know how long he sponsored it um, at this point. As a matter of fact, we let him go for, I think, like six months without billing him one time on accident. Um, and uh, I took it down after about when I realized what had happened because I figured he just forgot and didn't want to do it anymore. And I, he called me up instantly begging to get back in and so we got him on a recurring invoice, which makes it easy for him. Uh, but he's a big supporter of this meetup and we're glad to have him. Uh, but I did want to ask, is there anyone going to Affiliate Summit this weekend in New York City? Uh, Mr. Brooks and me and Brooks. So um, if you guys don't get a chance to make it out to one of the big Affiliate Summits in New York City or Las Vegas, uh, they happen twice a year. Um, they also do a local uh, local event called the Performance Marketing Summit. It was a couple of months ago, but they'll do them again in the future. Um, so don't miss the opportunity to go to those. If you want to learn about affiliate marketing, either as a publisher, someone trying to earn commissions, or as a merchant, someone trying to sell your uh, products through people referring them and paying commissions for that, um, the affiliate summit is definitely a great place to go. Uh, if you're gonna tweet tonight, use the hashtag be awesome. Uh, don't forget to use the Meetup app to check in and upload photos. We really appreciate it when you do that. And, uh, and of course, we're thankful to Capital Factory for having us here. So I'll go ahead and stop taking up all your time, and I'll introduce our speaker tonight. Um, I've known him for a while now, uh, not a really long time, um, but was introduced to him by a really trusted friend and uh, have gotten to know him and talk to him about the strategies he uses and um, brainstorming compared to the strategies I use. And it's really good to be able to bounce that off of somebody who's um, really knowledgeable. And uh, our speaker tonight is definitely knowledgeable. So again, I won't take up too much of your time. I'd like to introduce uh, the CEO of Unique Influence. He's managed over 10, he's managed teams that have managed over 10 thousand businesses AdWords campaigns and so he's gonna bring all of that experience to here uh, here for you guys tonight so without further ado mr. Ryan Hi. Right. thanks Dave. all right so I'd like to get a sense for who all is in the room here today who here uh, is in some sort of marketing capacity or owner capacity at their business Okay, so most people, that's good. And then, uh, who here works in a company that has, let's say, more than 50 people? Okay, got it. And then, uh, so then the rest is on the other side, that's good. And then, I'd also like to get a sense for who here has a Google AdWords campaign that you know, they're trying to maybe think about or get off the ground, or it's you know, something that you're currently thinking about that you're trying to solve. Okay, quite a few, good, all right. So I'm gonna like ask you guys here just in a second to potentially participate. So a uh, little bit about the company, Unique Influence. We're a boutique digital advertising agency. We've been in business for three and a half years. And uh, we primarily focus in on Google and Facebook advertising, but we're a multi-channel digital advertising agency and uh, we provide services across all of search, social, affiliate, and display marketing. And uh, people typically come to us when they're looking to figure out how to solve digital advertising at some level of scale and think about how it um, interacts across these different channels. So I have this big deck prepared, but I actually feel like instead of doing that, what I would rather do is show you guys how to create a campaign and specifically um, how I would go through the research process of trying to set up a campaign. So uh, those of you who raised your hand, who hasn't set up their campaign at all and really just wants to get one set up? All right, you're sitting right in front. All right, so I'm gonna ask you maybe to wheel a little bit closer. 
And then uh, why don't you tell me uh, a little bit about what your business does, or maybe you can kind of tell the other people. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Shane, and I'm a mobile computer repair specialist here in Austin, Texas. And I specialize in meeting to small business owners and home-based business owners as well around their busy schedule and meet them where they're at. Great. Okay, fantastic. All right, so I can uh, work with that. So I guess people, if they were searching for you, they'd probably type in uh, Austin Computer Repair. Let's start with that. Yeah. All right, so if I come here, yeah, I see uh, IT Department Austin, Discount Electronics, Economy Computer Repair, all right, Geek Computer. So, you know, clearly some of these are local advertisements, which is good, uh, 210 Geeks. Okay, so the next thing I wanna try to do is do a little bit of research. So, like, I usually start with, uh, you, can, you can sit down, it's, it's cool. So, um, I usually like to start with thinking about what would I do to search for this? And, you know, certainly I'm thinking computer repair. And I'm probably not necessarily, I might be thinking about mobile computer repair, but let's just start a little bit more broadly and think computer repair. So uh, we're going to start there. And then what I like to do is use uh, this thing called the Google Keyword Tool. So uh, all you need to do is go to AdWords. So it's uh, adwords.google.com, fairly straightforward. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to create an ad that, you know, shows up in one of these areas. And we need to figure out what's the keyword we're going to show for, what's the ad going to say, what are our competitors doing, what are we going to pay for this, all sorts of stuff. So we're going to figure this all out right now. Uh, so again, the first thing that I like to do is you need to go set up a Google AdWords account, which, you know, just go to adwords.google.com, pretty straightforward. Once you've done that, uh, you will end up at a screen that has these little toolbars at the top, and you can click on Tools, and you can click on Keyword Finder. All right, so uh, Google recently came out with this revision to the way that they think about keywords. There's uh, these four different like sections that you can go into. And so um, there are some easy ways to get started in the process and kind of the easiest way to think about is the first one in this list is a fairly easy place to get started, which says search for new keyword and ad group ideas. So it's pretty much saying like, what do you do? Are you flowers or used cars? It's trying to give you something very, very broad. Um, and I'll ask you another question, which is, Shane, do you have an actual, do you have a website? I do, though right now at the moment it's not up. Okay, all right, so we'll just, uh, you know, we'll make it, we'll like just call you IT Department Austin for now. So one way to go about this is I could, you know, if I had a website developed for me, and I wanted to look at what people might be searching for, I could come in here and put in my page where I'm gonna send this traffic to. And so that we can just pull it up. All right, so this is pretty clear. And uh, so if I came here and I, and I looked at it, one thing that we could do is, you know, Google could just go to the landing page, pull keywords from it, and give you suggestions. That may or may not be good. Uh, that's one approach. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna type in the keyword that I thought was most relevant, which is Austin Computer Repair. All right, so down here you have targeting locations. This is a local business, right? So we're talking about targeting people specifically in Austin, so let's do that. So let's come in here to locations. Um, we need to add Austin. All right, and then the United States automatically got removed. So you can see here, Austin, English, looks good. So we're gonna get some ideas. So what I'm finding in this result is what are um, the number of searches that, are, that people are making related to this term, Austin Computer Repair, and all of the related things around it, and how much are the bids? So you can see right here, these bids are $3, $7, somewhere in that range. So you know, if I come in here, I can actually drill into any of these ad group ideas that they've come up with. So this first one is Computer Repair of Austin, pretty straightforward. And I look here and Computer Repair Austin, this particular keyword, so very good results. This is very relevant. I would think that if somebody was searching for this, it would make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, this particular keyword has 720 people a month searching for it at a $7 bid. So what that bid means, it means that uh, every time somebody clicks on the ad, that you know, roughly I should bid around $7 to get some people clicking on it. And I'll kind of give you a sense for in a second um, how much 
you'll actually end up paying for that traffic and also give you a sense for uh, kind of how many clicks you'll get from that. So uh, if you look here, you can see there's all these different groups. The other thing I kind of want to think about too is I know that he's in mobile computer repair, so I just want to get a sense for, is anybody actually searching for mobile computer repair? Because that is the most relevant thing. And so it's probably low search volume, but you know the way that I would think about it is if people were searching for it, I would really want to show up. So mobile repair is right here. Very few people, 40 searches a month. That kind of tells you that you know, I, as a searcher, I don't search for mobile repair. What I search for is, you know, computer repair in Austin. But, you know, I could, in my ad text, that's where I could really differentiate and say, hey, I'm going to come to you on mobile. So let's come back here. Again, we're in this uh, keyword tool. And there's a lot of different things that we can potentially do from here. Uh, but one of the easiest things we can do is we can take these ad groups and we can uh, add them into, so you can see here this little add all button. That's right here. And I can add them into a plan. Uh, and I can get a sense for how much traffic I'm going to receive from these different keywords based on how I bid. So you can see right here I have this bid range. It's $0 to $30. Uh, that's a lot. And do you remember before we were talking about that the average bid was maybe somewhere around 7 So that is useful information that I would use here. So I would probably bring this back to around 7 and so, you know, what it's telling me is I could potentially get up to 166 clicks a day and spend $500 a day. So that's, you know, quite a bit. So that's good. That means there's a decent number of people searching. Um, but, you know, my question really is, how relevant are these keywords? My guess is there's probably a bunch of keywords in here that really aren't that good. Uh, so, you know, let's drill in even further. Um, so now I clicked on this little review estimates button. So there was a little review estimates button that I clicked on. It was blue. I get to here. And now I'm starting to get you know, one level deeper in terms of trying to figure out what it is that I'm potentially going to, to um, show up for. So again, I'm going to put my bid in here of about seven, get some detailed estimates. Uh, right. So it's thinking 130 to 160 clicks a day, three to 4,000 people a day searching, four to $500 of spend. At an ad position of 1.7 to 2.1. So this is a little relevant, uh, and I'll get into why it's relevant in a second. But what I want to do here first is I want to look in this list and see if these are actually relevant keywords. Because the reality is there's probably a bunch of keywords in here that aren't that relevant, and let's just get rid of some of them. So, you know, affordable computer repair, that niche looks pretty good. Data recovery, Austin, you know, uh, I don't know. And, you know, maybe we should use sort by clicks. So instead of going through all them, let's see like what's the actual, where are the clicks actually coming from? And this is why it's important. So do you see right here, Austin Mobile Home? Clearly that's not the business he's in. And so like had I just added all of these, you know, they would be in there. So I take this guy, you know, and I click this little edit button and I can get rid of that. Uh, Austin, Texas Reviews, not good. Computer Repair Georgetown, let's say he's willing to travel. Austin Website Design, we don't want that. Computer Support. Now, so this is an interesting one. So see how this one says computer support? Now, the word support, I feel like potentially could work with repair. I feel okay about that. Um, the thing that I would want to be careful about is, you know, if I just typed in computer support into here, you know, is this the group of people that are searching for my service? And, you know, I'm going to say that potentially, but, you know, it's not as good as maybe some other searches. And part of the reason is that it doesn't include the city. So, uh, you know, if I type in Austin computer support, there's a higher likelihood that I'm searching for a local business. If I just type in the word computer support, you know, I might just be looking for some online service uh, or like a, a, some sort of guide that could help me. Uh, but if you remember over here, under our targeting, we narrowed it down to Austin. So at least we know that even if you're typing in computer support, these are folks that are in Austin, which um, is at least pretty good. So I'll keep that in for now. IT services Austin, feel good about that. PC repair, that's great. Laptop repair, okay, I feel all right about that. Remote computer repair, that, that one's really good. Um, you know, you can spend, so this tells you right here, at our current bid of $7, Austin Mobile Computer Repair. You know, you're getting five clicks a day, which is not a lot, but you know, you're getting maybe twenty dollars to spend a day. And if you were just starting out, like, and this is the only thing you're doing, you didn't have a lot of money, maybe these would be the only compute, only keywords you would show up for. So something to think about. So I like to just go through here and make sure we get rid of all the things that are irrelevant. 
And okay, so let's delete these out. Good. So I can now save this to my account. So let's just assume these are good keywords. And this average position, 1.6, what that pretty much means is at this $7 bid, I'm going to, on average, show up between 1.6 and 2 point something. So I'm going to show up in one of these two spots, give or take, probably closer to the second spot. But that's pretty good. If you're in the top three, that's generally where you want to be. It's this thing called the top page bid. So, uh, and just to illustrate that point, I'm going to bring my bid down to $4. So what you'll notice here is my average position goes down just a little bit, my spend goes down, my impressions goes down, my clicks goes down, everything kind of declines just a little bit. So this gives you a sense for this, this sensitivity. And actually, this shows you the curve, which says, you know, if I bid, uh, or if, I get, if I end up paying on a CPC every my cost per click, it's an important term, if I end up paying $1.63 for every click, then uh, I'll probably get 50 clicks a day, not bad. And I will do it at an average cost of $26 a day. So this is, if you're kind of doing the math with me, 47 times 1.63 is a lot more than 26, right? You know it's something above uh, 50. It's probably getting close to 75 or something like this, maybe 80. So the reason why the cost is less than the clicks is because there is a difference between what you bid and what you pay per click. It's an auction. So if I'm bidding $1.63 for a click, what this is telling me is that I will end up probably paying less. I'll end up paying 26.3 divided by 47.95. My CPC will be about 54 cents, my cost per click. So just gives you a sense, like that gap can be pretty big, which is why when I talk about a $7 bid up here, and you know that's about right here on the curve, you know, the reality is it thinks I'm gonna spend $283 off of 85 clicks. So again, 283 divided by 85, about $3.3 per click. So it's not seven, all right? So let's continue. We'll save this to our account. Call the campaign whatever you want. The draft campaign is fine, or we can just call it just campaign one. Or maybe I'm gonna call it, you know, let's, let's be, have a little bit of organization here. Let's call it, um, Austin Computer Repair. All right. I need to set a default bid, that's fine. And this is very important, daily budget. So, you know, my guess is we might not want to spend a ton to begin with. Maybe we want to do some testing. This is an interesting point to talk about the difference between testing and scaling. So when you're first starting out a campaign, don't like go crazy. Just spend a little bit of money, learn a little bit, see does my website work? Um, it, it, does it work to drive people to actually um, call me? You know, is uh, the experience on there working? Are people clicking on my ads? Is this just backing out for me? So you don't need to have this huge budget to begin with, but you know something that's reasonable enough to gather some data. Um, so I'm just call it fifty dollars a day because. You know, once you get below 50 bucks a day, there's not a lot, you just don't learn very much. So for example, you know, $50 a day at $3 a click, we're only talking about 16 clicks a day or something like that. It's just not that much traffic. And something to think about is not everybody who comes to your website is going to convert. I mean, you know in your own personal behavior that you go to the website and then you just leave because you go somewhere else, you don't like the way the site looks, it doesn't solve your problem, I don't need mobile computer repair, whatever. So uh, let's assume that that like, conversion rate number is 10%. So off of uh, 16 clicks, I might get one to two people a day that are actually interested in my service, uh, which you know, is okay, but it's just not a ton of calls, right? So uh, as you make that number smaller, you might get to the point where it's just even hard to get a read on whether or not this program is driving any value for you. Uh, so anyways, let's put 50 bucks in there. So now it's in the process of saving. The nice thing is Google makes it fairly easy to spend your money with them, and uh, they create a lot of tools like this that did not exist years ago to make it really, really easy. So let's go in, let's view our new campaign. And I'll uh, also say this is the first time I've gone through this workflow. I've never done it this way. I've always created it by hand. But this is very efficient, and I think that it will be a good way if you're trying to get started on how to go. So one thing I want to point out is campaign settings. So there's a lot that's going on in these settings, and it's really uh, important for me to walk through these different things because 
Uh, if you don't kind of know what is going on here, you can end up spending a lot of money in an area of the world inside of Google that you didn't mean to spend money on. And this is one of like the first places I'll look when people say that they're not having success with their campaigns because I want to get a sense for how it was set up. Like who are you targeting actually, right? So uh, the first thing to think about is the type. And I like to do all features. And then there's this other thing over here which is search and display. So there's a huge difference between the search network and the display network. And so let's have a quick chat on that. So the search network is people that are searching here, okay? There, are these, there is this thing called search partners. Search partners are people that have been partnered with Google and Google powers their search. So for example, if I type in Austin Computer Repair and AOL, I think AOL uses theirs, you'll notice these are Google search results, right? And you can even say enhanced by Google, which pretty means that it's their results. Uh, so, you know, AOL gave up on trying to be in the search game. Makes sense. Give it to Google, share in the revenue. I think it's a good idea. Uh, so the point is, this is a search partner. My question for you is, you know, did you, when you were trying to advertise on Google, think that you are going to be advertising on AOL? Maybe yes, maybe no. Let's just be really deliberate about that. The second thing is, um, let's go and type in Austin Computer Repair and let's go find some kind of random page. Mm. Let's just take, this is not really good, but um, maybe hold on. I want to show you that example. Okay, this is probably better. All right, so these guys, CPU Austin, they have a site, and maybe they have advertising on it. See all these like blog articles? Somewhere they typed in, see this Austin computer repair? So that's why they're kind of showing up whatever, and the question is like, did you want to show up on this page? Do you think that someone who lands on this page is the person that's actively looking for Austin Computer Repair? Maybe, you know, or maybe they landed on it just because they saw this post or something like that. So it may not be where you want to be showing up, and the reality is this advert, you could have advertising on the right, and that could be an ad that you could show up in. And even though you think you're buying these little text ads that look like this, that they could show up as a little text ad over here, and I'm sure you've seen them as you go to different sites. So that's display advertising. So the idea is that if you're trying to get started, just do search, and then you'll be uh, kind of in much better shape. And then down here, you have networks. So the question is, do we include the search partners? It's very interesting that by default, the way that I created this campaign kind of led you in the path of least problems, which I think is interesting for Google that they did this. Uh, which is they created a search only, and they did not include the search partners. Personally, I really like the search partners, so let's turn that guy on. So then you have devices, which this is kind of a disjointed experience. Um, I realize it feels like the page just jumped, and what happened was we went from all settings, yeah, and then I clicked on this little button here, right, and it took me to devices right there. All right, just so you guys are familiar with the interface. So Google does not give you a way to target just mobile devices. And actually, for a local business, this is kind of frustrating. Um, and you know, this is deliberate on their part, but that's fine. But the point is that like, as a local business, I might want to just show advertising to people that are on their phone. And you ever notice when you go to Google and you see that ad, and then to the right of it, it says call. And then you click on that thing that says call, and then up pops the phone number. You can click on it and talk to somebody right away. I mean, what a great way to get to a phone call with somebody. So you know, that's a great way to um, get leads from a local business or directly get phone calls. Something to note in that ad unit is that when somebody clicks on call, that's when you pay for the click. It's not when they actually call you. So there will always be a discrepancy between somebody clicking on that call button and the number of calls you get. Just some things you know. All right, so at any rate, I can put a uh, bid adjustment in here. So let's say, for example, I don't want to show up for mobile at all. What I do is I can come into this little button, this bid adjuster, I click on this, I decrease by 100%. So that would just completely disable mobile. And I can do the same thing with uh, tablets, I think. Maybe I can't. I can't. Okay, that's fine. 
Um, at any rate, that's fine. So we come back over here to settings. Now I have mobile disabled. Just keep that in mind. And here's my location targeting, Austin, Texas. Yep, languages you know, for you guys in terms of what we're dealing with. I just don't worry about it. And then uh, focus on clicks. Okay, this is important. So Google does have its own little algorithms in terms of bidding, and it will try to do things to improve your conversion rate and things like this. And I would just keep it simple. I'll manually set my bids for clicks. That's it. So let's do that. If you do want to get more sophisticated in your bidding, I recommend a bid management platform, not using Google System. So that's my answer to that. Do you have so, any recommendations to on tools? Yeah. yeah so uh, it kind of depends on where your spend level is at, uh, and so do you have a spend level kind of range I'll per month? Try a follow up question, but yeah. I'm just curious to like your comp in general. Yeah, uh, well, okay, so I really like Kenshu, I really like Marin, they're both very good leading platforms. Um, when you start running s like very large campaigns, like 100K plus type campaigns, uh, it can be helpful to have that type of functionality. And um, when you're kind of smaller, then Marin has a pro feature that I don't know the level at which you need to be at to use it, but they have a, a tool that's a little more accessible. Um, so we, we use both. Um, we also have a license to Kenshu, but you have to, you know, you need to be spending like hundreds of thousands a month through a platform to make it worthwhile. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so those are the settings. We went through that pretty clear. Um, remember all those ad groups we just added in? So here's all those ad groups. And they have all these different keywords associated with them, and you will probably remember Computer Repair of Austin. I can click on that. In here there are keywords, Computer Repair Austin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. You also remember these bids. Do you remember these $7 bids we said earlier? Well, that's where they're showing up. And the way that bidding works inside of Google is you have this concept of a campaign, an ad group, and keywords. Okay, so the campaign, remember, we set up was like this campaign Austin computer. That's what I just called it. And all of these ad groups from that keyword tool that we had, I plugged into the ad group. And uh, inside, or sorry, I plugged them into the campaign. And there's a bunch of ad groups associated with it. So those ad groups have keywords associated with them. And uh, the way that the hierarchy is structured in here is that by default, uh, if you're just not getting more specific with your bidding, your bids will be set at the ad group level. So that $7 that we set by default got set on all of those individual ad groups. So I could come up here if I wanted and I could change the bid. So I could click here and change the bid, make it $5, for example. So this particular ad group, Computer Repair Boston, this one has $5, the rest of them still have seven. So I change it at the ad group level. The other thing I can do is I can change it at the keyword level. So let's say, for example, Computer Repair Austin. Well, let's do one thing first. So under Columns, you see this Customize Columns? I'm gonna click that, go under Attributes. So there's some uh, little things here, um, attributes you wanna add. So estimated first page bid is important. Estimate top page bid and quality score. All right, so I don't have a quality score yet. Uh, I don't even have ads, we haven't been running. I'm not gonna get down the quality score path. Research it, learn it, love it. That's a 102 session. So, uh, but the first page bid is important because that tells you the bid that you need to be on the first page for that keyword. There's not data in here yet because it's just a brand new campaign, but it will populate, so it'll come back like later tonight, there will be data. And then there's the estimated top page bid, and that estimated top page bid is what you need to bid to show up on the top. So remember I said you really want to be in the top three spots? You know, these three up here, that's the top page bid, and that is right here, that data exists. So, you know, if this keyword, for example, you're like, man, I'm just like, I want to show for Austin Computer Repair, but I just don't know why I'm showing up. You could come in here and you could change your bid. You know, you could bring that one up to seven and say I want you to search for it. There's something I want to bring up about match type. So all of these keywords right now are what's called broad match. Um, and what broad match means, and you'll notice, kind of the reason why I know that they're broad match is there's no um, quotes around it and there's no brackets around it. And what broad match means is if computer, the word computer, the word repair, and the word Austin show up anywhere in the search, that I will then match for this keyword. But let's say, for example, I just wanted to match for 
Um, if somebody exactly typed in computer repair Austin, think of that word exactly, right? So I can change it by clicking on it right here. And then I can, well, it's nice that they do that. So you can actually just change it to exact match. Um, and you'll notice what happens is it puts these little brackets right here. I was going to do it manually. <laughs> and then phrase match has these little quotes. And so the quotes, what that means is you can have anything before the phrase, anything after the phrase, and that will be what shows up. So here's the general rule. Do not run broad match, OK, ever. Just don't do it. You should run exact match or phrase match, or you can run this thing called broad match modified, which is where you put these little plus signs in front of some of these keywords. It's a somewhat more advanced technique called broad match modified or modified broad. That will at least ensure that the word that you're matching for is one of those words. Google left to its own devices will match you to all sorts of stuff that's actually not what you meant to show up for. It's a big black hole. This is probably the number one reason why I see people have problems. So, um, well, no, it is the number one reason why I see people have problems. That and the display network. And the reason behind that is because, like, you were thinking that you were going to show up for computer repair Austin. Well, what happens if you sold, you showed up for used computers for sale in Austin? Because Google, for some reason, thought repair and sale were somehow relevant. It's like, that's not relevant at all. And we come in all the time to campaigns. People are spending thousands of dollars a month. And I look at the queries, this thing called Search Query Performance Report, which, you know, again, a, a later topic. Uh, then I look at them, I'm like, man, this is not at all related to what you thought you were trying to show up for. So the very first thing we do when we go in is we'll just clean it up. We'll change this all to broad match modified, get rid of extended broad is what it's called, where there's no pluses in front of it. We don't run that. And uh, we like exact match and phrase match. Those are good. Oh, and see right here. Do you see how this showed up? This estimated first page bid. So we have a bid now. So for this, um, and actually, I think if I refresh this page, I'll probably have that data for all of them, which would be kind of nice. No, not yet, just the one. That's fine. But you know, my $7 bid is going to just like way outpace this 90 cents. So I'm definitely going to show up on the page. The question is, what will it take to show up at the top? All right, so we've solved one part of the equation, which is keywords. And in the last couple of minutes, I want to solve the last part, which is ads. And then your ads are live. It's pretty simple. Um, so we come over here to ads, and we create an ad, plus ad, plus text ad. And then we come over here to headline. And so there are limits here. The first limit is this is 25 characters. You can see it right here. The next limit is this is 35 characters. You can see that here. And the last one is this is 35 characters. You can see that here. The display line um, needs to be, display URL needs to match your domain. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that for now, just keep it simple. So remember back uh, these trusty IT department of Austin, we're going to have to tell them that they were used all day today. They got all sorts of free advertising. So uh, I would put that in there. And then I would probably get rid of the www, get rid of the slash. You know, and you can stylize this. Like, you know, maybe you'd say IT uppercase department. I don't know, something like that. That was strange to me. So uh, at any rate, oh yeah, so they just kept a www, which is fine. But you can see um, that's that. And then headline, you know, you can put whatever you want in here. You know, these guys, this is where paying attention to your competitors can be kind of helpful. And I'll just give you one little kind of power tip, which is I can take this guy, this domain, and I come to this tool called SEMrush. This is like the holy grail of figuring out what your competitors are doing. So you pay for it, it's like 100 bucks a month, whatever. It's great. So you come in here. And you put in your domain that you're trying to find data on. And I can see IT, oh, geez, they're so small. Uh, discount electronics, this probably will be big enough. This works a little bit better as you get bigger accounts. OK, so these guys spend quite a bit. So I can see here how much like organic value they're getting. That's fine. I don't really care about that at the moment. We're talking about paid search. And then I can see paid search data. So I can see that they're spending roughly $1.2,000 a month, and they're getting about 1 1.5, 1,500 clicks a month across 1,300 keywords. And you can see what their keywords are here, and I can actually just view this report. And I can get a sense for the type of keywords they're So discount electronics Austin. You know, so that's like a keyword that could be uh, relevant. 
if I was in this business. You know, because it's interesting, because Discount Electronics Austin, they actually are slightly in the business of computer repair, and they have a brand here locally. So, you know, if somebody typed in, you know, Austin um, Discount Electronics, might I want to show up? Maybe. You know, so anyways, you can see what keywords they're showing up for. This is also very interesting, so I want to maybe highlight this point. Um, whoever built this actually is a pretty smart person. So this is a really good strategy. So they're showing up for Dell, Precision, and 90. And I don't know if like they um, meant to do this exactly on purpose, but okay, they're in the business of selling parts, that's fine. But you know, if I'm actually typing in the name of a motherboard, there's the possibility that I'm trying to solve a problem with that thing specifically, and maybe you know, I could need someone to help me. And so, you know, I think motherboard is probably a little too specific, but you know, maybe it's like uh, I'm having problems with my Dell computer or something like that. And you know, you could type in uh, maybe Dell computer and maybe that, like, and maybe the specific Dell computer number. And you know, it's possible that showing up for that keyword in Austin potentially is relevant. But again, things to think about for later. Right now, just focus on the keywords that are most relevant and to, I'd really like to show you a competitor that uses keywords that are really relevant. I promise, love so this guys. Was your uh, preference between SEM Rush and Spiker? Yeah, you are like the tool guy, aren't you? That's I'm good. Yeah, I agree. I mean, why why would we create the wheel? They did it for you. Uh, I like SEMrush. Do you think that the Spyfu was accurate? I don't know the answer. I use Spy. I use SEMrush. We switched from Spyfu to SEMrush. I can tell you that. It's worth hundred dollars. I think so. Yeah. Well, definitely for us, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, um, so look, computer repair near me. I don't know that we were showing up for that, but this guy, this is, this tells you, this is where they're getting eighteen percent of the traffic now. SEMrush isn't extremely accurate, but computer repair from near me, I bet you anything that phrase was not in our list of keywords. So let's go back and find out. So I'm gonna come back here just to kind of just look, and I'm gonna go back to all campaigns, I'm gonna look at my keywords, and um, I'm gonna search in there and see if computer repair near me was in there. Oh, cheap computer repair, laptop. no, but see, it's not the same. You know, this is different. This isn't computer repair near me. These are two different, these are cheap computer repair and laptop computer repair. So at any rate, it kind of gives you a sense for what they're doing, gives you more keywords to add in. Big pro tip, definitely, definitely use it. Um, and at any rate, so you, again, you create an ad, you finish it out. You can do display preference, which is I want these ads to by preference show up on mobile. So if you had an ad that was for desktop and an ad that was for mobile, you could have two different ads for the same ad group and then one would be more likely to show up uh, on mobile. And really that's it, you save the ad and then at that point your advertising goes live. And you can check to see um, if your ads are actually live by clicking on this, like scrolling over this. And you can see like, I haven't entered my billing details yet, that's fine. I haven't created an ad, that's fine. But you can also click on this little ad preview and diagnostics. And then you can preview. And then you can see if your ad is showing up and if not, it'll tell you why, which is really helpful. I can't tell you like, we were talking about the 10,000 businesses. I mean, when we had all these businesses we were working for, it's like, I don't, you know, I don't know why it's showing up. So let's figure out. These campaigns are really complex. There's a bunch of reasons. So you come in here, you figure out, okay, well, I'll just solve that problem. Uh, and this is how you can set up your first campaign. One thing to talk about just briefly is this concept of conversions. So if you go up to tools and conversions, this one probably not so much because we're talking about getting people to pick up the phone and call. A little bit harder to track. There are ways to track calls. I'm not going to get into that right now. But um, you can add a conversion and create a web page conversion and you know, call it whatever, and you'll have some code with that little guy. Okay. And so this little code right here, you give this to your web dev guy, give it to David. <laughs> but at any rate, so like take this, plug that on your site, on the thank you page after somebody has filled out their information. And then every time a conversion happens, you'll see that inside of here. And that's really the magic, right? You need to see when conversions happen so that you can bid more on the keywords that are driving conversions, less on the ones that aren't. And that's how you actually drive real customers, right? Because I'm here under keywords. Once I have my conversions, I'll come over here under columns, add my conversions, my converted clicks, my cost per converted click, my click-through rate, all that fun stuff. 
Yep, that's my data. And so like if I get conversions, I'm gonna start wanting to show up in like the number one, two spot for those keywords. So I'm gonna start bidding more. If I start getting a bunch of clicks from keywords that aren't converting, I'm gonna bid less, pause them, whatever. And it's, that's really it. Okay, we'll start with you then go to you. Can you get Google to optimize based on conversions? Yeah, and so my suggestion earlier was to not do that. Why is that? Um, I don't feel like their I don't feel like their uh, conversion algorithm is that great. Okay. So I'd rather do it by hand, and you know it doesn't take a lot. You just go in here, you see what converted, maybe bid more, because I want to know what position I'm looking for, and I want to know there's a lot of reasons behind it, and then I also want to know like what actually went into that search, and you know this is this thing I mentioned earlier about a search query performance report. And there's just so much stuff that Google just ends up not knowing about your campaigns that typically needs to be pulled in from a third party. So it's not just typically as easy as, oh, there's a conversion pixel on my contact. Well, you know, as you get more complex campaigns, and maybe there's data from Salesforce about whether or not that lead turned into being qualified, and you know, data from over here. And so you want to aggregate all this information together and then make bidding decisions based on that. Yeah, some of that. Specifically regarding the ad copies, um, the Google um, network, uh, specifically regarding enabled ads, uh, I'm just curious on your thoughts on enabled ads on the head monitor, and if it's worthwhile, is it easy for regular people to take on? When you say enabled ads, what do you mean? Uh, enabled ads. Uh, I mean dynamically keyword inserted ads? That's what I meant. Okay, yeah. So um, short answer is I probably wouldn't use it, would not use it. And the primary reason is that you should create your this is a little more complex of a topic. I'll answer this question and then if you know we want to take off on. But uh, you should create your ad groups tightly so, enough. Just, just to clarify, so everyone knows what it is about. If I were to type it that the, the header of the ad would match the exact term that I'm saying. Yeah, and so uh, you know, with that, I probably wouldn't do it because you want to have a few number of keywords in your ad groups, and you want your ad to really speak to all those keywords, not one individual keyword, so I'd rather control the headline itself. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, I'm uh, here to answer questions and things like that until 8, so if you guys want to come by around. and. Uh, Oh yeah, yes, yes, and again, you can come up too. But yes, what's your question? Question, um, okay, so he was working on his mobile uh, repair. Yes. How much would you recommend that he spend the first month when he's trying this out? I mean, I mean if we start getting down to dollars? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then, you know, actually, I guess I should bring up my contact information because that probably is a relevant question that leads into this. So uh, short answer is like for, for us, as a business, it probably starts to make sense when you have budgets that are like in, let's call it, budgets that are in, let's call it, the neighborhood of 10K a month. And so for a business like us to actually get engaged and, you know, be able to pay for our fees and things like that that are on top of your ad spend, um, you know, we start to come in and say, okay, well, you need to do that because we need to build these big powerhouse campaigns. You know, if we're talking about like one local business and there's only so much traffic that I could potentially get, like we saw earlier, I mean, I think he could probably only spend $100 a day. So if we're only able to spend $100 a day on the right keywords, you know, then what percentage of that do I need to capture? Again, I went back to that. If you're spending less than 50 bucks a day, it's really hard to learn much. And you know, so now you learn some things, maybe get up to 100, maybe it gets up to 200 a day. Um, but you know, that's probably the upside potential of that campaign. It's totally campaign specific though, right? So we'll have clients that, you know, isn't geographically located, they're not geographically located, you know, their market potential, and this is a big question, opportunity sizing. So like, how much could I spend in this market? And you know, what I say is it totally just depends on how many people are searching, so we figure it out, and then we say, oh, okay, well, it looks like you could spend 100 grand. Well, that's great, so let's start with a small test amount, maybe let's call it 10K for that first month, learn some things, and then you know, maybe we'll scale it up like 30% a month until we get up to that 100K number, something like that. Yeah. yeah I have a question for you, to this person was asking. So yeah. he was asking about keyword insertion, yeah. and I was wondering how does keyword insertion affect your ad rank? 
is Google, um, which is working for Gamer, they rank your ads based on how relevant it matters to the keywords. Yeah. And your, um, your metrics, so your keyword insertion puts the keyword the people are searching for in your ad, is then bump your head rate. Yeah, so, yeah. I have another question. So, yeah. yeah, well, let me, let me just, yeah. Okay, so it's this concept called quality score, which, you know, ad rank gets into this. And 70% uh, of quality score has to do with click-through rate, and the rest of it has to do with what's in your ad and what is going to be in your landing page. Uh, the only reason why you would do, the only reason why your dynamic keyword insertion in your headline would somehow improve your quality score is if it caused your click-through rate to go up. So if your click-through rate went up because you use that, then the quality score would go up, which is a good thing. And then you end up paying less for each click. I'm not going to get into that topic right now. It's a little more complex. But if it doesn't, or if it leads to a decline, which is very possible because, you know, maybe that keyword, like, you know, how boring is it to just go to Google, type in a keyword, and then see eight ads that say the exact same thing, because everybody's using dynamic keyword insertion. It's like, well, which, which one really should I be clicking on? And so we actually like to control the copy more and try to do some selling in it and therefore improve the click through it that way. Okay. The second question was about uh, broad match, phrase match, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the broad match, broad phrase match. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so what would you recommend when you started, okay, what would you recommend percentage-wise how much you should be broad, how much you should be phrased, and how much you should be exact. Uh, in terms of your spend or in terms of number of keywords? How much work, because if you're doing exact match, you have to do a lot of work trying to find the right keywords. Yeah. So how much Start with, start, I would say start with broad match modified, not extended broad, right? Those little plus signs. I'd just say start there and learn, and then you would do this thing called a search query performance report and figure out what keywords are actually driving conversions. You know, the way that we do it is we make one broad match modified and one exact match for every single keyword we're trying to go after. So if it's Computer Repair Austin, we would do Computer Repair Austin broad match modified, and we would do Computer Repair Austin exact match, and they'd be in two different ad groups. Yeah, if you have an additional question, we can talk later. All right, so I'm going to take the last two questions, and then if you guys want to ask additional questions, just come on. Product listing ads, what do you think about yeah, yeah, product listing ads are great. So if you guys can visualize this, when you go to Google, you type in like red shoes or whatever. Um, I think that, you know, you guys are searching for red strappy shoes. I can see it. <laughs> but, um, you know, you go to Google and type in red strappy shoes. Uh, you know, you're going to see these little images with uh, photos. And uh, product listing ads are fantastic, and they're getting a lot of the clicks related to that because it's a way of pre-qualifying. So, you know, I know what that thing is that I'm potentially going to click on. Uh, so, yeah, if you're an e-commerce company, absolutely do product listing ads. It's definitely more of a power um, way of doing things. But, yeah, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Any advice? Oh, any advice on how to do it? No, on how to optimize it. How to... Yeah, so the big thing to worry about with product listing ads is that you end up having the name of the keyword, sorry, you end up having the, um, okay, so there's not keywords with product listing ads, yeah. So um, what ends up happening is the keyword that really matters, the thing that you end up matching to is like the name of your title of your product or the description or something like that. So the keyword that you are trying to show up for, you want to be somewhere in there. Uh, there's also like a really good, well, if you're trying to do it at scale, there's a good company here in town who has a tool, AdLucent, that came out this with a tool, but you'd need probably be doing it at some level of scale uh, for that to make sense. There's also just like, like for me, like if I was trying to do that in your shoes, I would maybe go, you know, PLA optimization techniques, Google that, you know, and then it'll be, it'll say like, okay, you need a category. You need your category needs to be descriptive. You need this attribute. You know, it'll it'll kind of walk you through the elements, and then maybe you can start to show up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, uh, what is a typical conversion rate on a landing page? I know it depends on a landing page. Yeah. What can you get it up to fifty percent? Hey, no. Can you get it up to that high? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've heard people talk about landing pages, and you know, they've they've got oh, I got seventy five percent conversion rate on this. Um, yeah. In the past, I've heard that. <laughs> And I don't know if I'm being lied to or if they are it's true. <laughs> you know, there's uh, some good <laughs> some good coastline uh, in Oklahoma that I could give you. So uh, yeah, no, I, I you know I don't I don't think you're going you're not getting 57 percent conversion rate. It, you know, 
the more you pre-qualify somebody, the higher likelihood you're going to get a conversion. So for example, off maybe some really highly targeted affiliate marketing with a really targeted email list with a really well-built email that you know when you click on it, you could probably get some pretty high conversion rates. That's probably the outlier. I'm talking about email, by the way. Yeah. Like email can read out for you. Okay. Okay. Well, that 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 could be true. It's probably unlikely. Yeah. But the reality is we're talking about search, and so today, like as it relates to search. You know, conversion rates are probably somewhere in the two to eight percent range. Typically, we what have some campaigns. For a sales page, you're talking about, or for making a sale, or for yeah, sale is probably less. Probably like industry average, and there's a lot of benchmarks. Since maybe two to four lead gen, you know, maybe you get up to like six to twenty percent if it's like a really awesome one. What's on the high end on that point though? Just industry. Like what industry? You said six to twenty percent. Uh, you know, I don't know that it's an industry. I mean, you can actually. That you can definitely Google, like by industry, what conversion rates might be. Uh, but no, it has more to do with, you know, the keyword that I showed up for. Was it really relevant? And when somebody clicked on it, did they come to a landing page that ultimately was exactly what you promised them? You might get 20% then. Yeah. And somebody in the back of the question. Yeah, it's kind of a two-part question. So if I'm doing like a Google search, I'm like, starting out completely fresh, is there any reason to get into negative? Keywords at all, or should I just run it straight forward and come into that later? And then, how do I tell from the data when I can start doing A/B testing? Yeah, uh, fairly not beginner questions. So I'll give you short answers since they're fairly complex uh, questions that would take a while for me to properly explain. Short answer is if you do broad mesh modified and you do exact mesh terms, you and you're showing up for keywords that are good and relevant, the likelihood that you need to do negative matching right out of the gate is probably low. That being said, jobs is one you probably want to kill. Jobs is always something like Austin computer repair jobs. You know, there's always the jobs. So like maybe a negative match out jobs. Um, that's probably like it to start with. And then you use this thing called the search query performance report. You can Google that. And you can then see which keywords people are actually searching for and then clicking on to get to your site. And you can see which of those are actually leading to conversions or not. From there, that's where you kind of mine the search query performance report and get your negatives matched out. And then you can start to like add your negatives. Much more complex than like just getting something set up and going. But that is helpful and negatives are important and it's definitely a topic that you need to know about if you want to start scaling the campaign past like maybe a thousand or two thousand bucks a month. Um, that's how you get rid of the, the fat that's in your account. And then the second question about A-B testing. Um, sir, I don't know, maybe five to ten grand a month, somewhere in that range, just don't worry about A-B testing. Yeah, <laughs> we'll spend more. <laughs> I mean, you can do it now. It's fine. You have to. There's uh, the, the, there's this thing called the chi squared test, C H I, and then there's the little like bracket, and then the two. So it's a chi squared test, right? And uh, it's the second power. That will give you a sense for um, whether or not you have enough impression data to actually make a decision on whether or not one ad is better than another. The reality is, when you're spending low amounts of money, you can't make a statistically significant decision. And so like, if you want to run one ad against each other to see which one has a better click-through rate, as long as you keep the default setting in Google, which is to let it automatically optimize for the best ads, it'll automatically start showing the ad that has the better copy. It's not really doing A-B testing, you're just trying to find better ads, and Google will just take care of it for you. Cool. All right, and again, if you guys want to talk, I'm up here. Thanks, Ryan. All right. Thanks to everybody for still being in the back. Uh, we're here for a while, so stay in network, and uh, thanks for coming out.